Bethesda reveals a new PvP mode that will come to Fallout 76 known as Survival Mode. While many of the PvP features will stay the same, there will be a few differences in terms of restrictions. Survival Mode will be coming to Fallout 76 beta sometime during March 2019, which will feature the same quests, events and story, however the current PvP rules will be more laid back. It introduces a new rule that marks all teammates or event group mates automatically as hostile towards each other by default. While in current standard play you need to invite players to PvP, survival mode will not require invitations. This means players in this mode can tack each other and do normal damage from the first shot. There is also level scaling, meaning new characters have a chance to survive against higher level ones to help even the playing field. The developer is also planning to add a death mechanic which means in survival mode players will be unable to choose to seek revenge respawn option that is currently in standard play. The options for the new mode will allow players to respawn at either your camp or Vault 76. Reward changes have also been planned by Bethesda. Double caps will be awarded for a kill. Those who die may also have a chance to drop their aid or other items as well as junk. Nothing is confirmed yet as Bethesda assures fans on the Fallout 76 subreddit, which has seen a lot of suggestions from the player base, that they will continue to improve survival according to feedback. Obsidian, the developers behind Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire, have released the patch notes for the update 4.1.0. The patch comes with some new features including the new turn-based mode for beta. Turn-based mode is another way for players to experience combat in Pillars of Eternity 2. The mode is still in open beta meaning players can give feedback to the developers for consideration. In order to try the new mode you will need to start a new game and choose turn-based mode. The mode allows players to choose actions for their characters which act independently of each other. You can now plan your attacks and abilities at your own speed. The mode will give you a completely different feel to the tactical combat of the game. The next round for Anthem's demo takes place this weekend and Bioware already have a bunch of fixes to go with it. Last weekend was the VIP demo where those who pre-ordered or had Origins access could experience the sci-fi action RPG. Before the public demo hit this weekend, Bioware had some fixes that went live. The VIP demo had its share of problems but Bioware and EA were able to give more stability to the demo so enough players could have a chance to try out the game. In a blog post on the developer's website, they addressed some of the areas that they fixed. This included entitlement bugs, server performance updates to address much of the rubber banding, fixes for infinite loads and more being investigated, platform bugs to validate javelin unlocks, as well as client and platform login bugs. Bioware's head live service, Chad Robinson, also shared some interesting statistics about the VIP demo. There was nearly 9 million hours of play across the demo, 1 million strongholds completed and 2 million grabbits slaughtered. This February, Xbox Games with Gold adds some new titles to the lineup. The list of games coming to Xbox Games with Gold will be free to play during certain periods, each differ for each game. One title getting access for the entire month of February is Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, which is inspired by the Castlevania games. You can access the game from February 1st until the 28th. Also arriving on the 1st of February is Assassin's Creed Rogue, the Xbox 360 and spin-off title in the franchise. It was remastered for the current generation of consoles during last year. Arriving on the 16th of February is the classic Super Bomb MMR. You can play this one until March 15th, giving you a month to enjoy. Also arriving on February 16th is Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy. Experience this one until end of Feb. The range of titles are quite different in genre but add some variety to the lineup. If you're tackling Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, be sure to read our Bloodstained Curse of the Moon trophy guide and roadmap for all your completionist needs. As Sega announces the delay of the next DLC for the JRPG Valkyria Chronicles 4, they try to appease eager fans with allowing them to access for free if they have pre-ordered and purchased other DLCs on Steam. The last two parts of the DLC are Advanced Ops and United Front with Squad 7. If you didn't pre-order the game, you can still gain the next DLC for free by purchasing any other DLC for Valkyria Chronicles 4 on PC through Steam. Valkyria Chronicles 4 is currently available on PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One and Nintendo Switch. If you're currently making your way through the game, be sure to check out our Valkyria Chronicles 4 guides. With recent news of Persona 5R reveal earlier this year and now the announced Western release of JRPG Persona Q2 new cinema labyrinth, Persona fans have definitely got something to look forward to. Atlas, however, have revealed that the voiceover options for upcoming Persona Q2 will only have the original Japanese soundtrack. Atlas released a statement to IGN sharing that Persona Q2 would only have the Japanese voice track, but with the option for English subtitles. If you were hoping that they would add the English dub later, Atlas have said, 
there are no plans to add an English dub to the game at this time. Persona Q2 follows the Persona 5 Phantom Thieves who are now trapped inside of movie-themed dungeons and must find their way out. Each dungeon gets its own movie genre theme, featuring parodies of the film classics. Persona Q2 New Cinema Labyrinth is available now for Nintendo 3DS in Japan and will be having its Western release on June 4, 2019. The secret movie which was announced by Square Enix would be joining Kingdom Hearts 3 a few days after its launch. Now the movie and the epilogue have been added to the game. If you wish to see both of these, you will need to complete the game first. However, the secret movie also has its own requirements in order to unlock the final seas depending on your difficulty setting. In order to unlock the secret movie, you will need to take pictures of the lucky emblems that are scattered around the different kingdoms in Kingdom Hearts 3 using your gummy phone. Depending on which difficulty setting you've chosen, means how many lucky marks you'll need to collect according to an article by Famitsu with director Tetsuya Nomura. This ranges from beginner difficulty to capture all 90 lucky marks, normal difficulty with a medium amount of lucky marks, and proud difficulty with considerably less. The exact amount of lucky marks required haven't been shared for normal or proud mode, but to be safe, the more the better. Kingdom Hearts 3 is available on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. If you want to unlock the secret movie, be sure to use our All Lucky Marks guide, as well as gain yourself in-game rewards and the Hidden King's Trophy. Well that's it for the week in the wikis, please join us again next week for yet another great week of gaming. Remember to check out our VIP program for some exclusive supportive benefits, and bunny writers should take advantage of our Become an Author initiative. Thanks again for being part of this great community, keep checking in with us for news, reviews, YouTube streams and vids, and general wiki goodness. Follow us on social media for all the latest and greatest, the more followers we get, the larger of the army of the Fexes grows.